Hello everybody outside there, a warm welcome also in the name of JFT. Um, yeah, a warm welcome to the webinar Stock Trading Strategy Part 1. So you see already it's a part one, so there should be and will be a part uh, two. And that is exactly in three weeks from now. But um, what is it today? Oh, today is the 6th of uh, September 2018. Yeah, autumn is uh, coming step by step. Uh, the way I realize it, that um, I have to be careful when I start the webinar at 7 p.m. German time, that I have to prepare myself and switch on the light already in the room, because later it might be already dark, and uh, then it's a little bit strange just sitting in the dark in front of the uh, screen. But anyhow, my name, my name is uh, Stefan Friedrichowski, you know, uh, kind of webinars um, I present here. It's a little bit uh, typical for me and uh, for the style and kind of webinars. So just call me Stefan uh, in case you get in touch with me directly, Skype, email, whatever. And you see already my email address and later you will realize, hey, yes, today it's really about trading strategies. So it's uh, Excel time. So we use Excel once again to create a few things here. And those Excel sheets um, are, so to say, public. So whenever you like to uh, have those, just send me an email to that mentioned address, s.friedrichowski, really complicated last name, at jfdbrokers.com. Uh, the good thing is that um, at least if you write jfdbrokers.com right, then finally uh, I will get the email <laughs> because people from custom support know to whom to forward uh, those kind of requests. Yeah. Okay. Um, Stock trading strategy. The reason why I once again go into stock trading, two reasons. One, because I'm convinced it's a good idea. It's a real enrichment to have stocks in your overall portfolio. That's the one reason. The other reason is I want to use that um, kind of trading strategy once again to give more line, more details about how to develop strategies. So it's also a little bit about the methodology, um, how to create trading strategies. And that is exactly what we will do today. We, we, we lay out the, the base, we lay out um, some um, rules for stock trading. We will look to those independently and not directly jumping into um, yeah, into a strategy, just optimize a few parameters, and then let's see uh, what and how we should trade um, that new trading strategy. It's a little bit more insight into uh, what counts when it comes to develop your own trading strategy. And we will do it, for example, stock trading. So that's um, the other part of uh, why I use uh, that um, example here, um, because I like to share my ideas not only directly in terms of um, ready to trade strategy, also in terms of how to develop those kind of trading strategies. Good. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the webinar is recorded and uh, you will find the recordings from tomorrow onwards on the JFD YouTube channel. <clears throat> and the other thing I have to mention always um, is uh, that kind of risk disclaimer. So we talk about trading strategies, but finally, when it comes to trading in your account, of course, um, you are fully responsible for any trade in your account. Um, that's self-explaining, I hope at least. And uh, yeah, I have mentioned that, which is very good and fine. Last thing uh, I want to mention is uh, that you can, you may find already the slides. Um, if you like, you can download those slides um, via the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, so there's a PDF document uh, which can be downloaded. Okay. A little bit more in detail what we what we do here today. So, okay, we start with stock trading in general, and um, I will simply repeat myself, and there's uh, just one slide, um, why I'm that convinced about stock trading as an additional enrichment for your overall trading activities. I think in portfolios. And for those portfolios, I think in, for example, investment in 
real gold. Uh, so no CFDs on gold, no future contracts on gold. No, I mean physical, the metal. Or for the portfolio, you need shares of stock companies. And of course, we need those activities like standard trading, forex, indices, whatever. All those things create your overall overall portfolio and uh, that is the real thing in terms of um, your your own world management yeah to prepare yourself for the future and to find some ways um, yeah to get some extra profits out of that so therefore one element is stock trading and therefore I want to mention that once again here and then we will introduce three strategies but it's not already a a ready to trade strategy it just methods it's more like principles um, elements for a trading strategy and therefore we do those three strategies independently so we will discuss one strategy which is simply called EMA cross you you might imagine already um, how we will trade um, when it comes to EMA cross even for the second one, you might already imagine what we will do. Normally, and you are right, <laughs> trading stop is not a um, is not a trading strategy. It's a methodology in order to to shift around to move um, your stop loss. But now we will simply use just the trailing stop as a trading strategy. The reason is that I want to get some light on what it really means if we use trailing stops and whether that is helpful at least for stock trading because my overall thinking is in, in more general trading like forex it's not that helpful but for stock trading we will realize it is helpful to use something like that and finally the third one is once again a real a trading strategy and since i'm lacking a yeah a real name for that i simply call the strategies highs trading so we has to do with the highs uh, in a certain time period and those highs will trigger and control when to open a trade and when to close a trade so um so we have three base strategies and you might imagine already what we will do in part two. <laughs> um, it's more or less quite obvious. Um, then we will start to combine those ideas. And all those three here will have just a single parameter. And already with that single parameter, we will realize we are able to get profitable stock trading strategies, which is amazing. Um, and what we will do finally here is that we not only look for a single stock company um, and my, my my example here during the webinar will be always Apple. I will just look for Apple and later I will explain why. Um, so Apple will be um, the one in all the Excel sheets. But what I have in mind is to trade with that strategy we develop here a complete portfolio and that portfolio will consist out of 100 stock companies and um, the selection is simple we just look for the s p 100 stock companies uh, funny enough uh, um, the, uh, the number of companies within s p 100 is not 100 um, it's 102 um, it's funny I have no explanation, but anyhow, I don't care. Um, if we look for 100 or 102, um, I simply don't care. Um, and that I think I'm, uh, I read the, the information why, but uh, I simply forgot um, the reason. But that is what I have in mind, to trade not single stock companies, um, not a single one, just to say, okay, we trade Apple. No, we want to create a bigger portfolio um, because as always, diversification is good for any um, trading strategy. Okay, um, let's start with that one slide 
for introduction about stock trading. Why stock trading <clears throat> is something different and valuable uh, and indeed valuable for your trading. If you normally buy um, a CFD, a long trade on Euro, US dollar, for example, we more or less buy nothing. Um, it's not really in the sense that we buy euros and put them in our wallet and wait, maybe they uh, have more value in a year, or we buy euros or we buy dollars or Japanese yen, no. Um, then it would be similar because then we would buy something with an intrinsic value, at least <clears throat> if you believe in those currencies because what you have is a piece of paper um, with a little bit of ink um, so it's not a real intrinsic value but now it's different if it comes to stocks if you buy shares of a company you buy something with an intrinsic value because there is a value behind thousands of elements of, of um, why there, there is an intrinsic value. Um, they may have buildings, they may have licenses for something, they may have good people working for them, they may have just money, they may have shares of other companies and so on and so on. So there's something behind. That is what I call the intrinsic value. So that is different than buying a CFD on Euro Japanese yen. The other thing, the good thing is, if you buy real stocks, and when I talk about real stocks, I mean real stocks, not CFDs on stocks, then you get dividends if those uh, if that particular company is paying dividends. But uh, right now, <clears throat> lots of companies are doing that. And even there, you can expect something, for example, like 5%. That is a profit. Um, so already, uh, that's a return of 5%. Why not? Not that bad. Um, so dividends come on top. The other good thing, on the one hand, is that you don't have any financing costs. Like uh, if you trade um, uh, DAX uh, long and you don't trade the future, then you have to pay every every night. Um, same is true for, for a lot of uh, forex pairs. Sometimes even you earn some money, but in general, you, you, you pay money because you have financing costs that you don't have if you buy stocks. But on the other hand, you don't have any leverage. So if you buy, for example, for $1,000 stocks of Apple, then you might buy about five um, shares. Um, yeah, your, your, your cash is $1,000 less. So the money is not really gone, but it has changed um, the way it behaves or the way you can look to that. But um, from a cash account, the money is gone. Um, just to mention, uh, if you have real shares, then you, you might even participate at annual meetings if you like. Um, maybe dif difficult if it comes to S&P uh, 100, but anyhow, it's not the strongest argument. The strongest argument to buy real shares or to, to, to buy shares is the shares have a long bias. Long bias are the intrinsic probability edge, the probability advantage for um, for stock trading. We know that on a long run, all those shares go north. Okay, there are exceptions. Um, like, uh, for example, um, Deutsche Bank, um, I think since 2008, they go south. I'm not 100% sure, but so there are exceptions. There are companies who are really losing value. Um, so one of our tasks will be to avoid those kind of shares, and we will see how to do that. But overall, we have a long bias for shares, uh, for stocks, for stock companies. And there's one very simple reason, and that is that our economic system is based on growth. And um, yeah, since everything is based on growth, companies have to grow. And uh, yeah, that's at least one argument uh, that we have that long bias. But anyhow, the reason behind, we can see it um, if you just look to, to charts of uh, stock companies. And the other good thing here is that you can trade already with uh, directly with JFD brokers 
you can trade real stocks as well, not only CFDs, and that you can do directly out of uh, MT5. And the other good thing here is that the um, round term cost, so the, the cost of buying and selling those stocks is just $2 if you don't exceed to high values in total. Um, and yeah, that is a really good price uh, for, for such a round term. If I would do it with my, my private bank, I uh, would, would definitely pay much more. Anyhow, that's the story really behind stock trading. But now it comes to the details. We not only want to buy them and then do nothing. Let's go to those kind of strategies um, that I want to introduce. So the first one is EMA cross. And let me simply repeat a little bit on what is written here on the slide because all the slides, I have three slides for the three different uh, strategies are structured the same because we are talking about trading strategies. So what do we need? We need an entry signal. We need to know whether we should open a trade, yes or no. And the entry signal here for EMA cross strategy is simple. We look for the previous day. Um, it, imagine we would have one o'clock today. We look for US companies. So at one o'clock um, your time and my time, um, and the stock market is closed. Uh, so we look for the price of the previous day. And we look for the close price of the previous day and compare that price with a certain EMA. Maybe EMA period 200, I don't care. So we, we will see later. And as long as the close price of the previous day is above that EMA value, that's a trigger signal to open a trade. Since as we look now at one o'clock, not now at seven o'clock, um, market is closed. So we will wait until the open of the day, which is German time half past three. And then we would buy that particular uh, company. That's all. So that's our entry signal. So we just compare close price with an EMA. And the same logic is valid for the exit signal. We close a trade if the close of the previous day is below that EMA. That's all. So in the morning, we will have a look to what has happened last night at close. And so, and the reason why I use exactly that kind of logic is so we have lots of time um, for our decision. So we don't have to do it uh, exactly at the open um, in terms of, of um, the decision itself. We, we just have to compare those two numbers and that we can do any time before half past three. So we would once again look, hey, what about the close price of the previous day? Is that below the EMA? The close, um, then it would trigger the close of our trade. And we would do it at the open of the day. That's all. That's the strategy. We will have a look in the chart as well in a minute. That kind of trade does not have any stop loss, at least because we want to keep all the individual three strategies extremely simple. Okay, now you might say, oh, Stefan, you always say we have to trade with a stop loss and don't trade without stop loss. In this case, it's okay. It's not that dangerous. Imagine you invest that amount of money of $1,000. Okay, um, it's, it's an amount, it's $1,000, but you will never <laughs> lose more than $1,000. Even those $1,000, you would only lose if um, the company would yeah, be off the market uh, overnight. <clears throat> Very strange. Um, okay, we have had financial crisis and uh, even um, a DAX noted company get bankrupt. And uh, during that, that was HRE, um, Hyper Real Estate or something uh, was, was the name. But it will not happen every, um, every day, definitely. So, but for stock trading, it's okay. We can live without a stop loss for those kind of trades. So the trade itself does not have a stop loss, but it will be st stopped out or uh, it will be closed definitely <laughs> uh, far above zero, but um, in, in normal cases. 
but now we have still to, to consider the position size, also, which means the number of shares we will buy, but that is really easy for, for stocks. Um, we will always talk about an invest sum um, for an individual company, and that is, for example, that 1,000. And um, if the price, for example, Apple would be at 198, uh, then we would buy five shares. Um, Mathematically, it would be five point uh, something, but since we cannot buy, can only buy um, integer numbers, um, so it would be five. And if the price would be 201, then already it would reduce the number of shares to four. That's the logic. And that's the logic we will have in the Excel sheet as well. Final rule, if a trade is running, we will not open any new trade on that symbol. So for that same company for that um, um, stock. So even if we would look every day to uh, the comparison between the close and the EMA, um, it will not try, uh, trigger new trades. If a trade is running, trade has to be closed first for a single company. Looking to a chart, um, it would look the following. So what you have uh, here in a few seconds, and I know uh, sometimes um, to to delay myself here a little bit, uh, but now a uh, picture is uh, out there. So what we have here is uh, Apple for, hmm, uh, it's a little bit more than a year, uh, nearly one and a half year. <clears throat> so you see a good growth of uh, that company. And um, there is already an EMA within the chart. That is an EMA in this case, 100 and 60. And if you follow the line, you would only see very few uh, points in time when we would close those trades. So imagine you would have started um, anything or considering for that strategy um, after the 1st of May of this year, um, you would see okay, the price is always above the EMA, so you would be invested in that company. And even um, if you would start around here, so when you find my cursor now in the middle of, uh, of the graph, imagine we would have started the strategy there and we would not have waited for the, um, for the next entry signal, so we would uh, buy the share exactly at my cursor position. Okay, the first trade would have been a minus trade, definitely, because we cross the EMA. We have here the close, and um, even at the following day, we would close finally the trade, so that would be a lost trade. But then um, we would have a new entry signal here, next minus trade, final entry signal here, so we would have been invested into Apple again. Here we stop the, the trade, we open once again next day, and so on and so forth. But finally, since here, 1st of May, we would be on that huge run north. Um, so as always, if you have some strategy like EMA cross, you see sometimes you get several signals um, uh, in a row. Um, but um, you, you see that those trades might be minus trades, but then from time to time we have that long running, quite well running trades. So that's the EMA cross strategy. And now what I have prepared is for any, for every strategy, um, one Excel sheet. Let's have a look to that. Uh, first, um, Apple D1 EMA. And here's a strategy, and let me only explain slightly or a little bit about that, is that Excel sheet. It's you, you might be already familiar because it's uh, something we have had already in the past. Um, a few things have changed just because we are trading only long, no short trades, uh, stuff like that. Uh, other change has been to translate everything into real in this case, a dollar. Um, so we don't, uh, we, we care about the commission, the, the $2 um, we have for a round turn, uh, for example, and we, we do any calcul every calculation here directly in dollar. We 
um, calculate the number of shares uh, we buy if a um, buy signal comes and so on and so forth. But now, what are the parameters? You, you know my, my color code already. I mark always those parameters in yellow, which should be changed or can be changed. So it's the EMA. We have that EMA cross strategy and that's the only parameter we should touch. In principle, that Excel should, would be able to, to look for a stop loss <clears throat> and a take profit as well. But I will, <coughs> sorry, I will not use those parameters. Therefore, they are not marked in, in yellow. Um, you, you might use them and uh, you might get better results by uh, choosing better parameters for stop loss and to take profit, but I simply don't use them, which means my stop loss <coughs> is 100%, so will never be reached. And uh, I use a, um, a risk reward ratio of 100, so I will never reach that value as well. But anyhow, so that is um, the, the logic here. So the only thing we can change or should change um, is the EMA period. And then we get different equity lines for trading Apple. And if you exchange uh, the first part here, so the prices, then you might go for any other um, stock company. So it's only up to you to, to put in here new data and then you can investigate other companies as well. Now I have, let's have a look, let's get a feeling. So that's the EMA4. I mean, EMA4 would maybe not the first choice if you look for such a strategy. And indeed, we start here with a lot of um, bad results uh, up to 2004. But funny enough, <clears throat> since 2004, that strategy more or less would have worked already, <laughs> which is really funny. The specific reason is we are looking for the Apple company. Ah, I forgot to mention why we, you, we look for Apple. Apple um, is the first company in the long row of the 100 S&P 100 um, um, companies. <clears throat> so the alphabetic order, since Apple has a... Um, um, a double A um, in front of uh, the symbol name. So it's always um, heading the list. So that's the reason why we look here. So well, now let's go for other email values. So I now go for eight and it's getting better. Um, and let me always uh, double the value. So I, I do it really um, in big, big steps, just doubling always the EMA period. And if you look to the total profit and all the key figures we have here, um, equity is getting better and better. And the other good thing is, and you, you, you remember uh, what I mentioned when we have had other strategies. What's always good, if the outcome of the strategy is not really that sensitive to our parameters and indeed to even to double the EMA period, which is already brutal more or less, uh, doesn't change the overall picture that much. So in, we get more and more profits here and we have less trades. Yes. And I go further with the doubling. And um, yeah, now we are already at about $8,000 profits here within the period of um, 18 years. Um, we nearly have no drawdown here, only at the beginning and then later only small, really small drawdowns. So it really looks good. So um, let me go further uh, up the road here, <clears throat> the EMA period. Okay, the, 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 the equity is getting more and more stepwise because we are not really looking to the equity. We are looking to the balance. So always closed trades are, let's say, reported uh, in within that chart. Um, but it looks good. So let me summarize just that result. So it works well. It doesn't depend, um, absolutely not sensitive to the EMA period. So that's already good. But now what I have done, and I have done the step not by Excel because um, I use, you know, uh, my, my C code for uh, those kind of investigations. What I have done is I looked for all the 100. And let me share the results here with you in a very strange graph. 
um, that graph is really looking strange and I have to explain. Um, maybe it's better that I start with what is one line within that Excel sheet. So one line within that Excel sheet is just summarizing 18 years trading of a particular company. So that company, and I don't know the real name for that, WFC, I have no idea um, which one is it. Uh, the I think uh, PFE, that is Pfizer and uh, Oracle, and then later we have um, Cisco. So a few I could name, uh, but not every of those 100. So but let's go back to the first line. So it's a summary of all trades within 18 years with an EMA period of 10. And finally, what turned out for that company, we have a loss for those 18 years of $2,861. Okay. Next line is another company out of those 100. And it's the next verse. So it's, this one is a little bit better. So they are the, the overall list is sorted first along EMA, second along profit of the company, and therefore I sum, and then later I summed up for one particular EMA all the results of those companies, and that leads to that circle behavior within the chart. So the first 100 here, um, you see that more than two thirds of all those companies do not work with the EMA cross. So we, when we sum up the profits of those first um, 70 companies, we are going further in the minus. So it's not an equity, it's a sum of all the trades of 18 years of, for those companies. And then the last one third of those 100 companies, they are profitable and therefore it goes up again. Good. But now to interpret that graph is quite easy. So the first group here is EMA 10, EMA 20, 40, 80, 160, 320, 640. Now let's focus, for example, here, 320. What does it mean? Okay, there are about 15 companies. The strategy EMA cross with an EMA of 320 are not profitable. But okay, but more or less they are zero. So they do not hurt really. Um, but all the rest, about 90% of all the others would work. They work out and we get profits. So one, this is not an equity, it's a sum, the successive sum of those 100 companies. And you see finally, okay, we get 170,000. Later, we will look to the real equity a long time and not number of companies as within that graph. That graph is only illustrating the overall picture of the kind of strategy, in this case, EMA cross. And you see, okay, small EMAs doesn't work out, but higher EMAs um, already starting with an EMA, let's say of about 80 is already working. So that's pretty fine that we know that EMA will use above 80 work. Nothing more I want to learn here. It's only the confirmation that's kind of strategy works and it works without any optimization besides the fact that I say no above 80 so EMA should be above 80 um, and then it works and that's the result I would uh, want to to create here so we we know the methodology EMA cross helps us for trading stocks and the higher the EMA the better okay the particular reason behind is obvious uh, because we we start um, somewhere in the past and then we take all the profits up to now uh, but we see already the benefit of an EMA within that kind of strategy so that is EMA 
let's come to the next part. So the next part is much simpler, or maybe not, but anyhow. We now use the trading stop as a strategy, which is strange, but I want to, later I want to have that kind of um, stop following mechanism within our trading strategy. But first, we just investigate trailing stop independently. What does it mean? We don't have a real entry signal. Our entry signal is yes, always, no decision. If we are right now not invested in a specific company, we start tomorrow. That's it. So it sounds weird. I know. Normally, we, we, we look for entry signals. In this case, we don't have an entry signal. The entry signal is always one. So we, yes. So we start trading anyhow. Um, the only signal we hear really is the exit. So we have an exit signal. It, it's obvious. It's a stop loss itself. If stop loss is reached, on the next day we open a trade on the same symbol. Regarding less how the chart looks like, no question. At least that's the logic to be investigated here. And the trailing stop logic here, I apply the following. And there are hundreds of different ways to do that, but this is the way uh, I have implemented in the Excel sheet, and it's really easy and straightforward. So we would start with an, a stop loss with a certain percentage value. Let's talk again about um, Apple at $200. We buy Apple uh, shares um, at uh, 200 and maybe our initial stop loss is 5%. So our stop loss would be $10 below the entry, so at 190 and that's all. And from now, so that's the starting value for our stop loss. And now it's easy. So let's wait for the next day. At the next day, we look one day back to the previous day, and we look at the low of the previous day. Then we we subtract, we, we um, take out the stop loss value and compare as a, the, the percentage value. And then we compare to our actual stop loss, which we have. And now the decision is easy. If the new value is higher than the older value, we shift our stop loss. That's all. And that we do iteratively from day to day. Of course, stop loss is always shifted to the north, never to the south. So the logic is if our candles, our lows are getting higher and higher, our stop loss moves together with those um, lows. Always plus, or better to say, minus our initial value of, in this case, 5%. So let's uh, um, short view here to the chart, um, just straightforward and, and, and um, very easy to hopefully to follow here. Um, so we start a trade, let's say, here. Oops, let's see open. So it should be here. And assume that our initial stop loss without doing the calculation really perfect here, uh, here. So whatever, that might be already only one or one and a half percent, but anyhow. So what I want to, to figure out here is, so later, some days later, when we have already lows here, we go down the same amount, we are already here. So stop loss would be now here. Below that candle, stop loss would already be about here. Always those one or one and a half percent below the last low. And if that is always higher, then we constantly, and that sequence of candles here would result in a constant shift every day for our stop loss. So it's uh, moving higher and higher and higher. So that's the trailing stop we apply here. Same we do in our Excel sheet, quite easy. And um, here we go, and this is a high strategy. And now we go for the trailing. So what we have is we have an initial stop loss. And um, 
Finally, I have um, always within the Excel sheet one one graph uh, with a stop loss, and you see it already at the bottom here a little bit. Um, but uh, since the initial stop loss here is just two percent, it's always quite cl close to our uh, price. So let's go up here with that one number: initial stop loss. Uh, equity is already once again getting better, and if we double it. Once again, we get similar, like with our EMA cross strategy, um, results are getting better and better. Um, equity is more smooth, drawdowns are um, getting lower. So that's perfect. And if you here go, for example, for 16%, um, yeah, then we have in total about $7,000 uh, profits with, um, with Apple. So no, not that bad. We always invest 1,000. Um, so that is a buy value, which um, is used for the calculation of the number of shares we we have here. And now you see already at the bottom of my, my screen here, uh, the red line below the blue line is uh, always stop loss. Okay, from time to time it's hit. and um, But beside some... Um, where we get really drawdowns, equity is not that bad. Finally, even with those drawdowns, um, it worked. So why not? And still keep in mind, the strategy uses a really weird entry signal. And the, the entry signal is just say yes. And there's no real decision. So if a trade is running into a stop loss on the next day we open the next long trade. Sounds weird, but you see what happens, uh, at least for Apple. Um, and having a stop loss of 16%, okay, uh, when we talk about a CFD trading of Euro, US dollar, I think we would never come to 16% stop loss distance, <laughs> of course. But here, mm, why not? So think about those $1,000, 16% does mean nothing else than, okay, our risk is, besides the gap risk, um, $160. Okay, so then 16% doesn't sound that huge. So it's acceptable to have stop loss values like that. Same story. I did the investigation for all the one, 100 uh, stock companies within S&P uh, 100, although it's 102, but it's always funny. Um, and we get the similar curve here. <laughs> um, you now know already that circle behaving um, graph, which is um, a little bit different now. Let's interpret that kind of picture. What does it mean? So if we start with, uh, oh, sorry, wrong trading. Once again, the wrong one. Here, here we go. I was already puzzled um, because uh, it should be more uh, bad at the very beginning here. We start with an initial, initial stop loss of 1%. Nearly 90% of all those companies do not work. So we don't get profits out of that kind of trading strategy, even if it's more a methodology. But anyhow, it does work. If you have higher stop loss values for our trading stops, our initial stop loss values like 2%, here is then 4%, 8, 16, and 32. Um, let's start here. Oops. Um, that is uh, 8 Already at 8% initial stop loss, um, only about 20 companies do not work and the other 80 work. So create profits. That's good. That's really good for us. So that methodology, trading stop, which is used here as a trading strategy, is already getting good results for the majority of all companies of those 100 companies at least if you go for initial stop loss values above eight percent that's good so next worked as well 
that was the third strategy. Now it comes to the, um, that was the second, now it comes to the third one. And the third one, and I don't have a better name, is just what I call highest trading. What does it mean? We always, we look one year back. So just um, one year we look back and we look for the last high within that one year. And that might be 10 days ago, it might be 100 days ago. So there's a number. There's a number of how many days ago the last high has occurred. So that's an integer number, so a num number of days. And later you will see within the Excel sheet, I call it number DSH, so uh, days since high. Um, so that's my, at least my, my wording for that uh, abbreviation. And so we know how long ago the last high has been. And now we use a trigger value, those X days. So if our last high is not older than, for example, 20 days, then this is our entry signal. It allows us to trade. So now we have the entry. On the other hand, we need an exit. And I simply for, I, I, I'm out of my head, I decided to double that X days to two X days. And if we don't have a new high within two X days, we close the trade. Idea behind this, a good stock company is creating new highs and that hopefully every couple of days. So maybe every 10 days, every 20 days. It should not, um, we should not wait too long that we get a new high. If we get constantly some new highs with always within the couple of days, that's great. That is a signal for, for a stock company yeah, which is really on top. I mean, it's it's uh, creating new highs all um, every couple of days. That's really great. If not, we close the trade. Once again, we don't have stop loss, and it's um, not that bad because uh, yeah, if there are no new highs within those two X days, we close the trade anyhow. Simple logic. When I call it highest trading, so. What is the result? Um, highs. And we need the Excel sheet a little bit more complicated and it has to do with those, uh, with, with that number. And uh, let me just explain why we have here uh, 246 and uh, then a two and a four. Uh, 256 is simply what I call a year. That's about the right number for, for one year of uh, trading days. And the two is indeed the uh, mentioned X days. So X equals two here. And then this times two is um, how long do we wait until uh, if we know, don't have a new high that we close the trade. The only number I, I change is the two going for four and already at two uh, strategy by the way worked and then four eight uh, it's getting better and better 16 um, so that idea of trading companies which have constantly new highs and if not we close our trade is a brilliant idea um, we we get quite good values here. Um, so the equity is, yeah, uh, not that bad. Drawdown is only small. So very well. For that, I did the investigation for all the 100 again. And you see the result here. And that is starting with, um, yeah, one day. So that really, we if you don't have all, every two days a new high, we close all the trades. So it doesn't work. Okay, uh, more or less we 
could expect uh, that kind of behavior. Um, then that x equals 2, 4, 8, 16, um, 32, 64, and 128. And you see that already in that region, uh, starting here at uh, 30, uh, at 16, the majority of all stock companies work with that strategy. That's good as well. So we have three kind of strategies or met methodologies which indeed already create profitable strategies. What I have done now additionally is to have a look to real equities. So that means profits versus time. But now simultaneously for all the 100 um, um, stock companies. And therefore, I have additional three equities here. And let me start with the EMA one. Um, let me first start with that kind of picture. So what do we have here? That is a balance. So always closed trades a long time but the sum of 100 traded companies. And the table behind here is indeed the list of all the trades. So starting with whatever GD is and so on, um, um, all the trades are listed here. And we don't know the floating behavior in, in between, but at least that's the equity for EMA cross 320. <laughs> Okay, in the financial crisis starting 2008, we have that drawdown, but that's it. So it's a really good strategy, single parameter. And as you realize already at, uh, at Apple, okay, you have a smaller EMA, then in most cases um, it's worse, but it's not that sensitive to the EMA value or EMA period. So that is for 300. And 20. I have done one further step here. Um, I even calculated the, um, the equity, meaning including the floating losses. Now, I, since you might get those Excel sheets and might have them, I just one remark. If a line here is marked with, with a name, in this case, UPS, it's not really meaning that line is uh, the traits of UPS. No, imagine how I did this thing here. Um, originally, that Excel sheet has had 400,000 lines with traits because we need for those 100 um, companies, we need the everyday behavior for um, about 4,000 days. And therefore, that's the reason why we have originally the Excel sheet has had 400,000 um, entries. But then I summarize those um, per day. So every single line here is just the sum of all the trades from all companies, but still there's a symbol name here. I might be better to delete them, but anyhow, it's just to illustrate here uh, the difference between equity and balance um, here. So same blue line as in the previous graph. And now the red line is what you would really see on your account because you see the floating losses or profits. And in this case, it's most of the time floating profits. Okay, then the drawdown in, in total is a little bit higher, but you, you see the overall behavior. It's a very good equity line. Um, so total profit here, 160,000, um, not that bad. Just the simple EMA cross strategy. Um, on the right-hand graph here, the blue one, you see the invested sum, uh, which cannot exceed the 100,000, but uh, you see, um, yeah, the average is maybe about uh, 60,000. So that is the um, invested sum. If you finally calculate something like a return per month, I can tell you the number. It's about 1%. It's 1% per month, which um, not directly, but uh, let's, let's do it roughly. Uh, it would be about 12% a year. Okay, 12% a year. Okay, 
not so bad. You would not get any anywhere else. Okay, we are still those drawdowns. I know them, um, but that's the equity here. Now, let's have a look to the same thing for um, the, just the trading. And um, there I go for trading with 16%. Remember, it's a weird strategy. It's only, it's always um, invested. It's it's opening the trade and the next day after we reach the stop loss. Therefore, that's the reason why we have a huge drawdown um, in the financial time of financial crisis. But overall, we have really good profits. So even more than with the EMA strategy. Okay. Finally, it should be a methodology for stop loss setting and not a trading strategy. But we know the the behavior behind and we know how to use it. Finally, we have that highs strategy and um, there I go for a number of um, days since last high of 64. And we have that kind of equity, which is a little bit similar to um, the one of the EMA. Even that one. Okay, drawdown at financial crisis, but then really good. It's about 1% per month. So you see the individual behavior of our three methodologies here, um, which is really good. And of course, now you might imagine what's my final slide here. Um, it's now up to us to combine it and see whether well, it really improves everything. So how much we can get out of the fine tuning if we combine the three elements. And combining the three um, immediately open up, let's say, four, four kind of combinations. Um, we have three, two combinations like trailing stop plus EMA cross, or we have highs and trailing stops, or we have trading um, EMA cross and what is left highs, um, those three. And then the fourth one is simple, all the three. Okay, that's easy. So that's our start position, starting position. We know the individual behavior for those elements and uh, we know already that it works, which is brilliant. So even those we might already trade trade those as a portfolio is even better. So stay tuned, I think. What happens if we combine it? And that is exactly what we will do in part two. Um, and uh, then that part is at, uh, 27th uh, of September. And hopefully you will join that kind of webinar as well. Here I want to mention that finally, even without optimization, we can get already good results, which is really fine. Okay, that's for tonight. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good time and see you hopefully in three weeks. Bye-bye.